been used by the revenue allocation, saying that it actually undermines development in their region. And of course, in our studio this morning, we are privileged to have the chairperson of CRA, that is Commission of Revenue Allocation, that is Dr. Jen Kirangai, who will be explaining to us more about this revenue allocation and what uh, Council of Governors are demanding for. But before we talk to her, let's have a look at what leaders uh, from the pastoralist um, the Kenya's northern frontier who have rejected uh, the new revenue sharing formula proposed by the Commission on Revenue Allocation. The leaders claim the formula is discriminatory and have petitioned the Senate to reject it until it is subjected to public participation. We are beginning to realize that history repeats itself. The government of the day has embarked on reintroducing an exclusionist approach to sharing national resources. The new formula is very subjective and discriminatory to certain parts of this country and more so to the pastoralist communities and the Asal counties. Marginalization is not a switch that can be just turned off. It is a state of underdevelopment accruing over 50 years of neglect by successive governments in Kenya. It can only be addressed through deliberate, sustained resource allocation. We are asking for our share in Kenya. We are not visitors. We are not guests. All right. Um, uh, the CRA chairperson, Dr. Jen Kirangai, will be responding to what uh, Ali Roba, the governor of Mandera, had to say and what some of the members of parliament from this uh, northeastern region are saying. But let me give you a breakdown of the formula that has been used uh, by CRA to come up with uh, the allocation of revenue in all the 47 counties. It will be on your screen in a few minutes ago. But first, it's just to enhance service delivery. Now, enhancing service delivery, the CRA is looking at health. And this is, of course, um, an insured population in patient days equivalent outpatient visits and of course the proposed weight is 15% for that and uh, in, under this uh, service delivery there is also agriculture, water, urban service and environment. So all that within the service delivery they'll also be looking at the population, the number of population in every county. The next thing they'll be looking at is balanced development when it comes to all the counties and of course that is county transport, trade development and region. They'll be looking at the land area county road network poverty which has been uh, proposed uh, weight is 15 percent now the other one is incentive capacity to raise revenue this is something that has caused a lot of political debate among political leaders from these 10 counties because they're saying that not all counties can collect revenue at the same level because they're saying that some of these counties are within the interior location of this country while others are within what they term as urban centers so this incentive capacity to to raise revenue should not be um, equalized by CRA and of course the other one is incentive prudent use of public funds. We've seen a lot of concern being raised on how some of the county governments have been using public funds that have been allocated to them by the national government. So all that is what the revenue, the Commission on Revenue Allocation is looking at. But let's talk to Dr. Jen Kirangai who is the chairperson of the CRA and Dr. I a lot of political debates about this. Talk to us first about the formula that's being used by CRA. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Allow me to start first by clarifying the process, because I think that is very important. The process that the Commission has put in place is a very robust process. What we have done so far is undertaken technical consultations to alight at the proposed draft formula. After the technical consultations, we have what we are calling a, a public consultation draft. So we have invited Kenyans and all stakeholders to look at the formula that we published, give us views, and you recall in the, in the, in the publication that went out, we gave Kenyans up to 25th of January to write to the commission and tell us what it is that they like or they don't like about the formula and give us concrete proposals in writing, then we'll be responding to those. After that, we, are, we propose to be visiting different regions to clarify the proposed formula. After we meet the public, we will also have a sitting with all the governors to hear their views on the formula. 
So after we've risen to all the Kenyans, after we've risen to the governors, we as a commission will then sit back and ask, what do we do here? Is there merit in looking at the weights, at the parameters, or the proposed approach to the new formula? So that's the process we have in place. And after that, we will then table the proposed draft to the National Assembly and the Senate again for consideration. So it, we have put in place a very robust process. We, what we have out in the media is a, a draft for public consultation, for public, for public participation, and all Kenyans are welcome to write to the commission and give us their views on the formula. So that's a process. So that is the process that you've, you've broken it down for us. Yes. But my question is, how did you actually arrive at the proposed formula? Because you're saying this is not the final draft that will be taken to the Senate yeah. for adoption. So how did you come up with this new formula? So to arrive at this formula, we also had the two consultations. And again, I want to emphasize here, we, did, we, had, we had in February this year put out a public notice alerting Kenyans that we will be revising the formula and again invited views on the, the current formula. We got some proposals. We had some county governments come to the commission and give us their views. We invited experts from universities and other, uh, and other civil society organizations. We had a sitting with a, a broad group of stakeholders. We invited uh, participation from uh, South Africa, from India. We had uh, Kenyatta University, Strathmore University, and other local experts give us their views on the, on the current formula and the critique on the formula. We then looked at the criticism of the existing formula and sought to strengthen it. First of all, like, uh, I, I would say we wanted first to ask what was the evolution, what was really the objective of coming up with a new constitution and the devolved system of governance? It was to enhance service delivery. So we asked how would we enhance service delivery? The second one is then how do we then promote, promote balanced growth? Bearing in mind that we have some parts of the countries that are, are lagging in infrastructure development following several years of an investment in infrastructure in those places. And number three, the Constitution also mandates the Commission to encourage fiscal responsibility or fiscal prudence, if you like. So we as a Commission sat back and said, those would be the obje four objectives we want to achieve in the, in the new formula. So then we asked, how do we enhance service delivery? And what are the devolved functions? So our objective then is to match more closely resources going to counties with devolved functions. And these devolved functions are health, that is one of the fully devolved functions. It's agriculture and livestock services. It, it is also, the uh, county governments are so, also responsible for roads and a lot of other functions, but we thought those were like the big ones. It is health, it is water, it is roads, then all other services we lumped together and asked. And, and, and Dr. Ari, talking, yeah. about, uh, talking about water, there has been a concern that um, the proposed weight is 3% that cuts across all the 47 counties. And one of the major concerns um, to governors of these 10 counties that are opposing your proposal, it is that you, you are comparing some of these counties, why in the interior parts of this country, the same as some counties in, um, lack of a better word, in urban areas. Talk about Kiambu, Nairobi, Mombasa. Uh, let me clarify that, and I was going to come to that when I come to the, the balanced development uh, objective. So the way we have crafted the water parameter is we say all the households without access to water is without access. And you agree with me that there are differentials in access to water. Counties in urban areas, the urban counties have uh, more households with access to water, while counties uh, in the far-flung areas will have, uh, will have more households without access to water. But then we also argue that uh, if we go back to the balanced development uh, objective, the, the, the land area, the land area parameter, it takes cognizance of the fact that it costs a lot more to deliver services in, in counties that have large have a very, very uh, populations that are far flung from each other and cover large tracts of land. That's why in the formula we, we keep the, the weight for land area at 8%. So that takes into account or into consideration 
the higher cost of service delivery or the higher cost of service provision in counties where you have very sparse populations. So what would you like to say, what is your response to governors who are saying that slashing some of these monies from other counties and adding them to what they term as rich counties because they're saying that it is actually unfair and this will actually derail development agenda for some counties? Again, I only want to clarify the formula today because it's not a final formula. We want Kenyans to understand what the formula is about and give written submissions to the commission. And if you allow me, let me go to the final, uh, I explain how we look at balanced or how we propose to promote balanced economic growth. The way we do it in the formula, we take three key valuables. We take land area, as I said, at 8%. We take the population of poor people and also the load network. So we argue that in, this, in, in, the, in the areas that have suffered a lot, uh, from lack of development or lack of in infrastructure, if you like, then there's merit from the land area parameter, taking that into consideration, the number of poor people. So we, would, we, be, we believe that uh, allowing 8% for land area, 15% for every poor Kenyan, and 3% for the load network, which together totals to 26% of the equitable share to county government. That then takes into account the, the differences in economic development or economic growth, if you like. So we take three, these three specific parameters to take care of lagging areas, areas that are lagging in development. And when we publish the formula next, because we will do so, we will separate the recurrent or the service delivery needs and the development needs separately to allow Kenyans to debate a little more. We'll separate the allocations based on service delivery needs where we are saying that every Kenyan without insurance gets about 1,500 shillings. And oh. when we're saying any Kenyan who goes to a hospital, the county gets compensated for 100 shillings. And right. for a, any inpatient, you get about 500 shillings. All right. Let's talk about the population. Census yes. is expected to be conducted in August this year. Mm -hmm. And one of the proposals from the Council of Governors is that uh, CRA should have at least waited for the census to be conducted and then, and, and then start allocating revenue because they are questioning the the figures that you're using right now. Why can't, my question is, why can't CRA then wait for the census to be conducted and then come up with a draft of how revenue is going to be shared among all the 47 counties? Uh, the, uh, again, as I say, this is a proposed draft. And the way we have crafted it, remember, there can't be a gap in revenue sharing. What we have proposed is once the new data becomes available, it will be used in the formula. So there is no gap in revenue allocation. Remember, while we wait for the, resource, for the results of the census, we will still in the meantime be sharing revenue among 47 county governments. So the proposal is work with the numbers that we have from the KNBS, but once new data becomes available, it becomes every valuable that uses population will use the new population data. So there is no gap whatsoever. So are you saying that, Dr. are you saying this morning that once the census has been conducted, that's in August, CRA is likely to review uh, the, uh, the revenue that they've allocated to some counties. The way it works, once you craft a formula, in the formula you indicate which variables will be changing. Yeah? In the current formula, for example, the way the, 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 the fiscal prudence parameter changes every year. What we are saying is, if you're collecting more revenue year on year, you get a little more. So in the current, for the proposed draft formula, we are saying every variable that uses population, once the new census data becomes available, that will be the data that will be used for the successive years. So for now, we will use the population numbers that we have, but when we have new population figures, we will indicate in the formula that when there is new data for population, that will be the data that will be used. That is what we have proposed in the current draft so that there is no gap or lacuna in the revenue sharing process. So let, just talk to us about um, uh, the amount that has been allocated to specifically, my question is specifically to Lamu County, and um, I think it should be Garissa. There's a difference of about a few hundreds of thousands of shillings because both of them have uh, one, one billion, one billion. What, what, what actually, you know, made the commission to come up with this figure because 
these are two different counties in different places. Talk about Garissa. It's in the northeastern region where issues of insecurity is high. Issues of food insecurity is also high. And another issue is also when it comes to revenue allocation by the county government compared to Lamu with some of these county governments in the northeastern. Look at Lamu as a place whereby it's, 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 been, it's, alloca it's located rather in a place that looks a bit better than uh, Garissa. Yet the allocation that has been given to these two counties are of the same amount. Uh, again, I didn't take uh, finish taking uh, taking you through the the whole formula because there are other variables in the formula that I have not talked about. There is what we call the public administration share, which is twenty percent, and this money allocates equal share to all counties. In the current proposal, it's about one point four billion for every county, for uh, to just to keep the county government learning. Uh, let me not go to the, into the specifics of how much each of these counties is getting because, again, I, I said it's a proposed draft. But let me explain the case for Lamu, which may not be obvious to someone who is looking at the past and the current. What happened, for example, in the last year, the way we had crafted or the, the way the previous formula or the existing formula allocates money based on le the, the, the revenues that county correct was that for if you correct an additional money, any additional money, person, then you get to share in the six billion that was set aside for revenue enhancement. What happened last year? Only 18 counties managed to increase their revenue. Lam was one of the counties that correct, collected 20 billion and for collecting, sorry, 20 million, for collecting 20 million more, Lamu got an additional one billion shillings simply because other counties were not correcting revenues. So it may be misleading for someone to, lead, to look at the allocation to Lamu and comparing it with the previous allocation simply because they, an they got an additional one billion, which was not in their base. All so, right. Yeah. All right. And Dr. Terry, before we bring this conversation to an end, I cannot end it before asking you, is there a division among commissioners within CRA and especially when it, come to, uh, when it comes to a lot of political infiltration because there has been allega allegations, as you've heard from that story that you played earlier, that uh, some political leaders from the central region have actually politically infiltrated the commission to ensure that counties within the central region get a huge junk of funds as compared to counties in the northeastern region. The formula, uh, I would say that the formula making process is very open, it's very transparent, and it is a part, we, uh, everyone in the commission, both our technical team that is the secretariat and the commissioners, we sit in one room, discuss and debate the formula. So this, I can assure you, there is no political inference in the boardroom, in the commission. We simply sit as a team and ask, uh, what is it that you don't like in this formula? What is it that you're proposing? And we take everyone's proposal and consideration on board. There is really, really no political inf in interference. It's a very technical, very technical process. We will open it to the political process when we meet parliament. That's when the political process begins. At the moment, so far, it's been a very technical process, technical consultations. So this morning, you're yes. confirming to us that the commission is yes. a team. There's no division. There is. A t we, this has been complete teamwork from A to Z in the whole technical process. And that's right. it for the political process when we meet Senate and the National Assembly. All right. And lastly, Dr. Tari, um, you told us that you're still getting views from Kenyans that this is not the final draft, yes. as uh, has been uh, alleged by some political leaders. So when is the final draft going to be out? And when are Kenyans supposed to, like the final day that they're supposed to, you know, submit their views to CRA? So we had given a date of 25th of January for Kenyans to submit their views. We will republish the formula again next week for those perhaps who are on vacation when we released it in December. To, and we, the window is still open up to 25th of January. But in the meantime, we'll be going to different uh, blocks again to clarify the formula to all Kenyans and invite more comments through town halls. So there will be a series of town halls in all the regions in the country for Kenyans to engage in the process. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Jen Kiringai, who's the chairperson of the Revenue, um, uh, the, Rev the Commission on Revenue Allocation, just trying to shed some more light when it comes to this whole political debate that has been there, saying that there's no division in the Commission when it comes to allocation of revenues. There's no political inf infiltration. This 
is not the final draft that will be sent to the Senate. The public is still expected to submit their views to the Senate before they sub uh, to, to the Commission rather uh, sorry for that before they submit the final uh, copy to the Senate for adoption and of course we'll wait and see how this plays out because as I've told you earlier when we're beginning this conversation, 10 counties, 10 counties so far have opposed this formula that has been proposed by CRA and some of them, especially some of the, the governors, the Council of Governors, are actually proposing that CRA should actually wait for the census to be conducted so that they can start allocating revenue to all the 47 counties. 